Daryl in Alaska. I don't get many notes from Alaska, so thank you for writing in. <laughs> if the moving magnet design is so much heavier than the moving coil phono cartridge, but produces a huge electrical signal, then why not just shrink the magnet to produce the same output, therefore being closer to the weight? I feel there is a, a, a issue with the comparison. Okay, so Daryl, I think what you're saying is if we can make a moving coil cartridge with uh, such low output and make it work into a phono preamp, why not take the size of the magnet on a moving magnet and reduce it down so that the output is the same as a moving coil, wouldn't that be a better way to go? Okay, so first off, let me explain how this sort of works. The difference between a moving magnet and a moving coil cartridge is kind of simple. You have the cantilever, which is the needle, and attached to the top of it is a magnet, which is heavy, a lot of mass, and around that are coils of wire. And as the cantilever moves back and forth, the magnet gets closer and farther away from the coils. You generate an electrical field and you get to hear it as music. A moving coil cartridge does the opposite. It has the magnets on the outside and the coil of wire is attached to the end of the cantilever, the needle, and the coil moves back and forth. The advantages of the moving coil are that it has less mass on the cantilever, which means it is able to move easier. So Daryl's asking, well, why don't you just make the magnet small enough so you have the same thing? And I guess you could do that. I'm not sure why you would do that. I don't know the advantage. I mean, at the end of the day, what you really want is a massless cantilever. You want a needle that's going into the record that has no hysteresis, no uh, latency, you know, because anytime you're trying to move mass, you remember old, our old friend Newton, right? Um, he, and, and all his laws of motion. Basically, it's anytime you try and take mass and you move it, it wants to keep going. At first, it doesn't want to start. Then you put energy into it and it goes, and it starts to move. And then when you say, okay, not putting any more energy, it keeps going, right? That's Newton's whatever. I don't remember the laws, but that's basically what's going on. So the lower the mass, whether it's a diaphragm, like, like these drivers, this mid-range and this tweeter on these Aspen speakers have almost no mass whatsoever. It's a very extremely microscopically thin piece of special plastic that is less mass than the air it's trying to move. And the lower the mass, the easier it is for this thing to move and the less you hear it as a tweeter. Well, the same thing goes for a phono cartridge. The less mass you can have, whether it's a woofer, a phono cartridge, or a tweeter, whatever it is, mass is something that we don't like. We'd like to have none of it. So. Uh, yeah, I, you could probably do that. I just don't think it would buy you anything because what you really want is no mass. And you'd have to do the calculation and figure out if you can have less mass with a tiny little magnet as opposed to a coil. And that, I, I don't know. I have no idea because that's way outside my pay level. All right. Thanks for the question, Daryl. All right.